What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Heavy Wrench. Thanks for tuning in today. Like always, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell for content and live streams Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Today we're working on a Bandit. Uh, what is this thing? Uh, 1890 XP. Got a clutch job to do on it. So I've already removed the clutch. I take time to uh, when you get a so a belt alignment's important on these. So I marked it here. And I also measured the gap on both sides. The belt alignment was good. The clutch was just bad. So I like to mark it, measure it, so we get somewhat to the same tension, and we know that there was an offset between the two measurements. So I kind of take my time to do that. Uh, other than that, I pull that clutch housing. Belt comes off. Clutch housing comes off. Pilot bearing comes out. Um, and now we are on to this. So. I also like to check the throwout bearing here, and I've checked it twice. It was about six thousandths, yeah, six between six and seven thou of distance between there. So we're going to keep that measurement. We're also going to measure the nut, but now we're going to pop this off. So I'm going to grab a puller. Maybe a pry bar might actually work on that. I'm going to try that. Hold on. All right. So we're going to try this right here. Is a sweet. Striking pry bar. Yeah, just one. Battery's dying on our microphone, so I'm going to try this and just see if it goes, you know. Sometimes throughout bearings will pop right yep, It's coming. Rather than using the puller, might still have to get the puller in there. But, uh, it's kind of going. Sometimes you can just evenly wedge a couple pry bars in there. And it'll pop right out. But this one, not so much. I guess we'll get a puller, but we've already moved that a little bit. That's a good sign. All right, got the puller on here. Snap on T-bar puller. Nothing, uh, nothing too fancy. But we're just gonna crank it around by hand. You don't always have to turn the. Uh, piece you're working on to make it work, right? You just turn it any way you need to. And she's popping right on off of there. I already ordered the part right from Bandit. And uh, surprisingly they had it in stock and everything was uh, good to go. They also said they sell this whole, whole piece. That was a unit. Right, so if you ever need the whole piece. So now that nut is right flush with that, it looks like. Well, we're going to measure that as well. Put it right in the groove. About three thousandths. So. There's a locking tab on that nut. And then we're going to make a cut here. Now we got to find out how big that nut is. It's nice when you have a set of calipers already out. 2.38. Nice part about this one. Switch it over here. 2 and 7 sixteenths. That is, uh, we'll see what we got for that. Let's see if we don't have, if we have a socket for it. Let me look. We're going to see what the old Milwaukee has. We're going to go from half inch to three quarter, from three quarter to one inch. Put the old socket on there, see if she's got enough to break her free. Just like that. 
Now it looks like we're going to have to use a puller on this as well. So we already have two bolts for it right there. So I'm going to grab some, uh, they look like half inch, possibly. So I'm going to grab some puller bolts and we'll be right back. All right. Next step I want to do, because I'm just that way, is I want to measure where to put my calipers at under the impact. I want to measure the distance from here, the clutch face, to the end of that shaft. And it is 1.98. if you do this then you'll know 1.95 will be within a few thousandths of an inch which is perfectly acceptable 1.99 1.98 so just under two inches from the tip of here to the face of that so now we know where our clutch has to sit when we're all said and done that's the uh, that's the biggest thing you know And I'm just going to put the puller on there. I have a couple of bolts here that if you have a snap-on T-bar puller and you need a half inch, they, they probably sell adapters to it and stuff. But uh, I took the bolts and I ground some flat spots so they fit in the T-bar puller nicely. And uh, it works out well for me. Got the long bar on here. I got that head gasket done the other day, just today. Starting to finish up on that. Uh oh, I might be in trouble here. You got a whole lot of threads on that. This one here I ground down randomly. You know, whenever you need a special tool, you never ever have the time to do it nicely, you know? And then you forget about it, and then you don't end up ever doing it any other way. Right? So, it is what it is. So we're going to head in with this one until it gets square. Pretty much square, pretty much square. Pop! Goes the leaf. Okay. Now we're off. Okay, that. Check this out. It's a tapered shaft. Wasn't that interesting? Tapered shaft with a keyway. That's sweet. And that's why she had to have a puller. You had never gotten it out. You know? So I'm going to move the. Yeah, the fork looks okay. We're going to move the cutout, or the keyway, to the top. So I like to start with the keyway at the top. You guys still in view? Oh yeah. Battery's about to die. So, let me switch out the battery. I'm going to measure everything up, make sure everything looks good, and then we'll go from there. Hopefully this works. I like using my aspirator to blow out all this flush stuff. You never know how, what's in it, right? So wet is always better than blowing it out dry. So I'm gonna get that cleaned up. See it now, you'll see it after. 
All right, and there you have it. Good and clean. Everything's clean. Clutch fork. Everything looks good. Um, nothing's bound up. Everything looks good. The shaft looks good. Everything's clean. A little bit of brake clean on the inside of that, and it'll be spotless, spotless. So we're going to bring her over, and we'll set the new clutch in. Took a, it takes time to clean that stuff up, but it's worth it, I think. I mean, that way you don't have a sloppy mess. Next time you go to adjust the clutch, it's not a mess. So stay tuned. We'll be head over there. Got that in place we're going to check the differences here we look to be the same everything looks to be very similar shaft size looks the same across the fork six and five eighths six and five eighths the center of the bearing in there is two and a two and mm, Um, spline wise looks to be the same a 650 06 BAM same part number on it I don't see any uh, inclination that we have the wrong one so brand new knife snap-on truck showed up today brand new CRKT um, 3801 lurch design pretty cool I don't know fast opener nice blade whatever new pocket knife uh, we have a new keyway we will be using that make sure the keyway slides into yeah perfect fit good to go we're gonna take this old clutch set it on the ground <coughs> We don't need that anymore. There's that. Now, I want to grab some brake clean. We'll clean off this shaft really well. That way, there's no oils on it. Even though it's got a keyway, being a tapered fit, I like to ensure that the taper shaft doesn't have any grease or oil on it. Um, it's the best way to talk away with the camera now. All right, I guess the best way to ensure that I like to use brake clean but what I will do is only in that keyway shaft, I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize because the worst part is a tapered shaft is if that, um, if that keyway sticks. So I'm going to clean this up really well from both sides. Try to get that shaft, that inner part is as good as possible. You probably can't see me right now. I'm cleaning the inside. Everything looks good there. Let that brake clean dry. Now, set this bad lad. Wrist out of there. Now, oh. Make sure you set your forks and there it goes. Okay, we got a little off here. 
straighten that up. Straighten that up. And like I said, I'm going to take a little bit of anti-seize and put it on here on the two sides. Let me grab that. I may get ridiculed in the comments for doing that, but taper shaft with a keyway. So the keyway is doing work. I'm just going to put a little bit. This is where a true little bit will do you do you good. Just enough to get it coated nice and lightly, and that's going to go on the top and bottom and sides. So we're just going to coat that ever so slightly so that way we can ensure that we're not uh, we're not going to seize that keyway in there but I don't want too much on there where it's going to make everything all nasty so there's that We'll look like the Tin Man when we're done, but that's okay. Well, this is copper, so. Mm, maybe I should have done it the other way. Probably should have let it swedge into the keyway. So, we'll pop it back off. No big deal. Should be able to pull out on that a little bit with the puller. One more time with the puller. No big deal. Still have it out. That's why we leave stuff out, you know? Right there. That goes on here. I guess I screwed up on that. That's okay. You know, show your mistakes. Don't worry about it. It's not like it's going to take me a day's worth of work to get this back off of here. So, whatever, right? seen it live. Just past flush. Same deal, shift fork. Now Disengage the clutch, which that's awesome, right? Now we're going to tap this on. So we see some threads. Now we have our lock piece, which isn't going to fit yet, so that's fine. Clean up this nut a little bit because that's nasty. Over there. Now we'll give 
the old heave ho. With our socket. And we'll suck that baby on there. technology for that though. No, nope, we're gonna pop that back off and actually reset that in a little bit. Well that sucks. Because the keyway moved out a little bit. So, no worries, we just pop it loose again, and then slide that keyway back about a half inch, and then we go from there. Like I say, guys, I don't, when you do this stuff, you gotta, sometimes you just gotta do it again, because stuff moves and whatnot, right? There we go. Pop that off. We got a little tang goes back in there a little ways. here that I can see from the old clutch. So, but we're still going to do our, now we had a two inch, I believe it was two inch, almost two inch, one and nine, so I'm told, from the nut. One and three. So we gotta give her a little more hammer. But we don't know what the, uh, new clutch versus old clutch uh, looks like either, right? Like the difference in. anymore. And we are sledged right 
right into that little prick there. Hmm. Just want to make sure we're going to be okay. We got this down here. And we're going to clean that out with the aspirator and uh, get it all clean, then we'll go from there. Same as the other side. I like using an aspirator with wet. Come back, it'll be clean. And it's clean. All right. We're ready to set a clutch on there. So, let's fire up the truck. Oh, I also installed the pilot bearing. I think I might have some alignment studs that are metric like that. So let me grab those and we'll, uh, we'll use those to line it up. Well, I was wrong. I don't have any alignment studs, but I got a couple lady slippers. That will work just fine. So, this bad lad up here. That one there. I'll fire the truck up. down Come on, baby. That's the tricky part. There we go, we got one set in. Gotta get that pilot bearing in too. Look, well, that next struggle. Well, it you just went in. Down a little 
little bit. There she goes. Now this will be the tricky part because we let that clutch relax a little bit. But I think I can get a pry bar down in there. Lady slipper. And shove up on that clutch disc. Maybe I can't. Maybe I completely screwed the pooch. get the uh, winch put on A and take it out of the shop here. So, I'll shut the camera off for now. We'll come back, we'll tighten that up, we'll grease it up, put the belt on, and yeah, finish the job. Alright. 
this all wrapped up. <clears throat> That's all of them. We'll hit them with a wrench when we're done. Putting the uh, belt on, but now we have good engagement, good disengagement. Gotta check the, uh, the rest of the stuff, but it's raining outside now. We'll slide this belt on. Start working it on. I didn't really. Uh, Loosen it up like crazy. I'm gonna see if there's a part number on this belt. Belt looks to be in good shape. Oh yeah. There is a part number. Some of it is scraped off. Oh, it might just be. Let's see if we can use this brand new knife I got from Snap-on to scrape some of this paint away here on this belt. Take a picture of that. Because that right there might come in handy someday. The tension in this, um, tension this up, which we'll be using, uh, down here we got to move the engine. The engine is how you tension the, uh, the belt. So I'm going to we'll grab a 15 16 ratchet wrench and we're going to see if we can't get her tight. Now I did not touch this nut right here so we should be able to go right back to where that's tight and it'll be uh, just fine. But the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the nut off. Here's the washers. The washers are going to go on here. I'm going to get a little uh, grease and put it on here. You can use axle, axle bearing grease, well, it doesn't matter, grease, right? That way the nut slides easier uh, on them washers. I don't know if you can see that or not. I guess I should be trying to figure out if you can see what I'm doing. I don't know if you can. You grab the light here in a second. But we'll set this on here. Get that one going. Get this one off here. Put the washer on that side. Get the rest of the grease. And like I said, that's just to to reduce the friction on that uh, on that washer. That'll just help us when we start to pull hard. Because we know one thing. This engine's probably heavy. Well, it is heavy. It's a four cylinder Perkins. And with a cooling pack and everything, we know that it's going to take some force, right? So we want to make sure we. The other thing is, we want to go even. I'm all ratchet. Put this grease away. Come on, ratchet. Look out. The oversight committee's here. The old time Walter showing up, complaining about the rain. There we go, an hour.
It is quite heavy. tight right there. And this one. Now let's check our belt tension. Make sure we're good. I think we're good. Could probably go a little bit more on this side, but I think our measurements are right there because I never moved this jam nut. So, but it does seem like it should be a little bit more, judging by the way the mark is. But maybe not. And right, remember I wrote my measurement down two and a sixteenth. So. Saws right two and a sixteenth there. We're real close to where we need to be. to me so we'll go there we'll check the other side and our belt tensions good we look square from what I can see we'll find out when we start uh, we'll fire it up without the one panel on it and we'll see what happens but let's get some panels on this thing back you guys up right over here I think there's probably a deflection amount on that, but I'll have to read the book and see what it says. But for right now, we can put on our, uh, our side panel, inside panel at least. All right, so <laughs> panels are all on now. Got them all set, belt tension is properly tightened. Motor mounts are all down. Everything's on that sled just fine. We're going to adjust our clutch tension. So, twin disc clutch has a plate on it right here. Comes on the top of it. It says here, um, or clockwise, have 177 to 133 foot pounds. So, minimum is 133, maximum is 177. Or if you want to do Newton meters, it's 240 and 181. So what I did is I, it has a hex head here on your clutch housing. So I set my torque wrench up to 195 because we're going to be able to see what it takes to engage this. So I'm going to go pretty close to even with the handle. So you can see we're going to start pushing. I think it's like 145 is where it hit. You'll be able to see better than me. But I try to go even with it so that way we're getting good torque and then it should when it starts to snap that's 146. So we could actually tighten up the clutch just a little bit more. I'd like to see 150, 160 I guess. So down here in the ring you have the ring down here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not. Maybe a little bit. We'll grab a light. Here's a light. We'll get down in there. We gotta find our adjustment though. So we're gonna roll this over until we find our pin adjustment. And there's a little pin in there. There it is right there. Now to make it stiffer, we go clockwise to make it Looser, we go counterclockwise. So let's grab a little pry bar here. And we're going to see if we can take it up to 177 or so. 
or 160 or something like that. So we're going to go about three, um, three tabs. There's three right there. Come back here, lock it in. Now you seen how I, I don't know if you can see that or not. Could you see that? Yeah, I guess you can. So now we're going to come back here. I'll bring you over here so you can check the torque. And uh, we'll see if we hit the 150, the 160, something like that. Um, I mean, we could go right to 177, but... Well, we hit over 190 that time. So that was three. We're going to take it back one. Let's take it back one. So we went three um, total. So let's go back one. Let's go back to where we just have one. So let's go there. It should have been pre-adjusted right from the factory, I guess. So there's a mark on there where we started. Um, but let's see where uh, where we end up. Because we don't want to be over 100. And... That time we hit 170. So one took it up almost 20 foot-pounds, which I don't know if I'd go over that as a on this particular clutch, I would say, right? So now we're pushing 40, 50, 60. Yeah, so that's actually right to max, right there. And it's, it's definitely hard to push. But I think if we start out there, that'll be a good spot for them to start right at max, so that way they can get her, you know, it'll break in a little bit and be good to go. But now our clutch is adjusted, belt's adjusted. We are ready to turn this thing on and actually uh, see what happens. So, let's fire this baby up. Get this old Percapillar. It's not a Percapillar. It's a Perkins. It's a real Perkins. So, we'll see. Get her all fired up. As Bubba says, let's get her fired up. Clutch is disengaged. Go through its diagnostic deal. a little bit too much of it. I don't like the way that sounds with the starter. I don't like the way that sounds on the starter. That starter does not sound healthy, does it? Now, like I said, I only, they fired it up once, it sounded bad, but uh, I don't know why that starter doesn't sound uh, healthy there. Well, let's shoot a little bit of grease into her and uh, go from there. Remember, we did a good job cleaning everything. We need to get a little bit of grease into the cross shafts.
there. We should be good. We're all greased up now. Up. Well, the wood chipper is done, clutch is done. We're all set on this bandit. Uh, what is it, 1890 XP, twin disc clutch, installed, done deal. Thanks for watching. Saturday night, check us out, The Heavy Wrench on YouTube, right here, this channel. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. You will come along with a good live stream. We had uh, David's Heavy Duty Tool Sales on last week. Great guy. If you're looking for special tools, check him out. He's got all sorts of good stuff on there in his website. Um, the Michigan guy, which I like to hear, you know, um, not University of Michigan, though. No. Sparty on, buddy. Sparty on. Um, anyway, enough of that jazz. Thanks for watching again. I appreciate it. As always, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Stay tuned for more content. I'm going to try to get more stuff. The head gasket job on the, on the L9000, the Cat 3306. I did get that done. Um, it's all set. I forgot to hit record. I got bit, I just got into the project and I didn't so uh, didn't hit record. Batteries died and all that good stuff and it just is what it is. But we're gonna get this one out there. Um, got a Bobcat leak. That's got to be done still. But this one's a wrap. So we'll check you later. See you tomorrow night. Or. Well, it won't be tomorrow night. Today's Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday. Who knows when this video will get posted. Probably on Tuesday next week. I don't know. We'll keep them coming, though. See ya. Pow.